Good morning, Chicken Nuggets. It's me, Ms. Sarowski. I'm here to teach you how to create a wonderful middle school appropriate discussion board and all of the etiquette and professional do's and don'ts that go into creating a um, professional level discussion board. So let's get right into it. So our agenda today is pretty simple. We're gonna go over very briefly what is a discussion board. I know you probably already know what it is, but we're just gonna review it so we're all on the same page and we all have the same starting definition and understanding. We are then gonna go over how to create a strong initial post. We're gonna go over some professional etiquette, do's and don'ts, and then we're gonna see some student samples, okay? So keep in mind that our discussion post that we're gonna create after this is going to try and answer the question, does your mindset contribute to your growth and your success? But by the end of this video specifically, you should be able to identify the components of a strong, strong initial discussion board post. There is a typo there, but we are not gonna film this again, so um, bear with me. All right, so what is a discussion board? A discussion board is an online space that posts responses often to a teacher-led question about a key course content, okay? So some type of idea that your teacher is trying to, to get across to you. It is a place to generate your own ideas and then to build off of the ideas of others, kind of like a conversation that you would have naturally with another person. So often, a discussion board, on a discussion board, you will do an initial post and a follow-up post. An initial post is what you're going to be creating today, and it is your response to the discussion question. So this post will likely be longer and more developed than your follow-up posts, meaning it's going to have more evidence, it's going to have more meat and potatoes to it, okay? Your follow-up posts are your responses to others on the discussion board. So these are your comments, right? You may add additional information, ask questions, or further develop your fellow classmates' response of your follow-up post. Okay, but the purpose of both is to propel the discussion forward. So there's a conversation being had and it, it seeks to answer the main question in, the, in a more clear and um, direct way. So how do you create a strong initial discussion board post? Number one, respond to the prompt, okay? Make sure that you have a clear statement that replies to the question posted. If you are answering the question and it has nothing to do with the question, if you're creating this wonderful elaborate response and your prompt is asking you, um, should firefighters be paid more and you're talking about ice cream, I have no holy heck and bob idea what you're talking about, okay? Neither is anybody else. You're not gonna get anywhere with that discussion. Support your response. Use cited evidence to support what you have to say. So you can even use hyperlinks. I see a lot of people using these, but I would love to see more people using hyperlinks. You just kind of like paste them in. They're, they're links that you find on the internet to help support your response. And they direct your classmates to your cited information. So when it's appropriate, you can also make personal connections as well. So if you have um, a personal um, story that you can tell that relates to the prompt and it is appropriate, this is absolutely the place to do it and it's really, really welcome. It, it adds a lot of depth to our discussion. Make sure you elaborate on your evidence. So once you put in your direct quote, I'll say it again, your direct quote, explain why you should choose the evidence or why you chose the evidence you did. And then make sure you connect this evidence and explanation back to your initial, your claim or your initial statement, your initial response, right? So I don't know if you've noticed, but this is kind of, it's kind of formatting to look like a CSET, right? You make a claim, you support your response um, with a piece of evidence directly from the text, and then you you say where it's from, you put your hyperlinks, right? And then you have your tie-in, you explain. So it's the same format, okay? Um, you may repeat these steps, particularly two and three, depending on what you have to say. A traditional and well-developed seventh grade standard level response has two pieces of evidence. I'll say it again, a seventh grade standard response has two pieces of evidence and um, tie-ins, okay? So it is recommended that you have anywhere between 150 and 250 words to be able to create this type of on-level standard response, okay? So professional etiquette. This is a discussion board. 
That means it's perfectly fine if you use a more conversational style. It's not an essay. You don't have to be super formal. However, keep in mind that this is still for class, so you need to make sure you look out for typos or language that would make your work seem confusing or inappropriate to other people that are reading it, okay? So slang is absolutely not appropriate here. Um, it can sound conversational, but you have to make sure that you're still you're still maintaining your professionalism. You still need to, this is school, right? Like it's not at the lunch table. Um, be to the point, meaning be like get straight to it, okay? And only say something if it has meaning or purpose. So it can be kind of tough to balance, but this isn't the place to write a 20 page essay. And it's also really not helpful to write a 10 word response. Both of them are, are going to get you nowhere. Um, work to get straight to the point while clarifying your perspective. So being clear about your ideas and your beliefs. Let's look at the first student sample. Okay. So should humanity make the switch to vegetarianism is the prompt that I gave my students. Okay. So this student said, Yes, because vegetarians are healthier. They have a lower risk for getting type 2 diabetes and they live longer. They also don't hurt animals as much because they eat more plants. Okay, a couple things here. Number one, they make a good claim. So they state vegetarians are healthier. Okay, I can get behind that. Um, very clear, straight to the point, and it takes a clear side, right? They have a lower risk for getting type 2 diabetes, and they live longer. These are excellent supporting statements to this main claim, right? But where is the evidence? You need to make sure you're pulling quotes directly from a piece of text. Um, and they also make this other this other claim about they also don't hurt animals as much because they eat more plants. That's all well and fine, but again, they're missing a lot of the meat here. Like, they don't have any evidence. There's no tie-in. Um, they really, really only are making um, just general claims. So um, this, while it does have a lot of good things to start, needs a lot more development. Okay. So if you're writing response that look, uh, responses that look like this, you need to make sure you're going back into the text and you're selecting um, quotes and pieces of evidence that support your statement. Sample number two. Okay. Now don't get overwhelmed. Becoming a vegetarian includes health benefits and even benefits the farmers who help create meal solutions for vegetarians. The article, Becoming a Vegetarian, states, Nowadays, plant-based eating is recognized as not only nutritionally sufficient, but also as a way to reduce the risk for many chronic illnesses. By becoming a vegetarian, it is evident that it will benefit health. Vegetarian diets ward off potential dangers and can even help to cure those health dangers. In an article published by the Washington Post, it says, furthermore, crops take up about half as much space as livestock. A study in a science journal concluded that a global vegetarian diet would be the best way to feed 2050's estimated population without adding farmland. These crops are a benefit to the farmers because they take up less space compared to the livestock, which we know can have its ups and downs. It can also benefit our future because it will help to create a fantastic way to feed future generations without wasting resources. By switching to being a vegetarian, it will benefit our future, health, environment, and resources. Okay? So this response is really, really well done. They have a very clear claim, right? And it goes over all of the different things they're going to talk about. She's, so this student is going to talk about health benefits, which she does. And she's also going to talk about how it benefits the farmers, right? And, and she does that as well down here, okay? She makes sure she's pulling evidence from articles and she's stating what the title of the article is and where they come from. So this one is an article titled Becoming a Vegetarian. And this article, she's pulling evidence from the Washington Post, right? And she's pulling direct quotes. She's literally copying and pasting directly from the article, which is super, super easy to do as long as you're making sure that you are giving credit to the author and the publisher, which she does. Okay. And then after each quote, she is including a piece of, um, not a piece of evidence. She's including a tie-in. She's explaining her reasoning. So she says here, nowadays, plant-based eating is recognized as not only nutritionally sufficient, but also as a way to reduce the risk for many chronic illnesses. So she goes on to explain further, right, from this piece of evidence in her own in her own knowledge, by becoming a vegetarian, it is evident it will benefit health, they ward off potential danger dangers, and can even help to cure these health dangers altogether, okay? So 
this is just an example of a really, really well done um, discussion board post. And if you are wondering, if you're like, Miss Sarowski, I don't know how to check my word count. Don't you worry, chicken nuggets. Look, if you just copy and paste, so you're gonna you're gonna copy, right? If you just Google word counter, okay, literally the first thing that pops up, I'm sure all of these are fine, but I usually just click the first one. You just copy and paste and it tells you how many words you have. So this student wrote 134 words. Um, don't really pay attention to the character count. That's just how many like little letters you have. You don't need to worry about that. Um, so this student has 184 words total. And as we stated, a really well-written discussion board post has 150 to 250 words. So she falls somewhere right in the middle, um, really well done. And she definitely, creates a clear claim, she supports her response with evidence, um, and then she explains her evidence and she does it twice. So she re repeats steps two and three two times, okay? So really, really well done. This is what you should be hoping to create in your discussion board posts. Um, when you go in today and you see what you're gonna be responding to in Schoology, um, make sure you consider all of this advice um, while you're creating your response. So that way you have really well-rounded discussion board posts and you get credit for today's attendance, okay? All right, I love you all so, so, so much. I hope your, um, your quarantine is going well. And if you have any questions, reach out to your teacher. Okay, bye-bye.